Jeeves and Wooster was a television adaptation of the popular and celebrated Jeeves stories, written by famous English author and humorist P.G. Wodehouse. The television series focused, as did the books, on wealthy and idle gentleman Bertram Bertie Wooster and his faithful and highly skilled valet Jeeves. Running from 1990 to 1993 and starring Stephen Fry as Jeeves and Hugh Laurie as Bertie Wooster, Jeeves and Wooster was highly regarded and won praise for the way in which it captured the spirit of the original stories. And one of the main ways it did this was through the use of music. Hot ginger and dynamite there's nothing but that at night Back in Nagasaki where the fellows chew to backy And the women wicky wacky woo In the blue and you don't know where to go to Why don't you go where fashion sits? Putting on the Ritz I could leave the old days behind Leave all my pals I'd never mind I could start my life all anew While popular music of the time was perhaps overrepresented in the television program compared to the original source material, popular songs of the day, as well as Bertie Wooster's opinion of them and musical skill, did make it into some of the Jeeves stories, at least occasionally. One of the principal stories which deals with this subject is Jeeves and the Song of Songs. In this story, the reader learns that Bertie, in addition to holding strong views on the song Sunny Boy, has a piano in his flat, maintains a taste for comic songs, and possesses a pleasant light baritone. Other examples of popular songs making it into the Jeeves stories can be found in The Code of the Woosters, in which Bertie plays Happy Days Are Here Again at the piano with one finger, and Thank You Jeeves, in which Bertie plays I Lift Up My Finger and Say Tweet Tweet on the banjo lately before switching to Body and Soul. As a result, the original popular music played and sung in the Jeeves and Wooster television program fits very nicely into the literary world of the Jeeves stories and contributes to the way the show captures the spirit of those original stories as well as that of the world and era in which they are set. The music of Jeeves and Wooster is also perhaps a fitting tribute to P.G. Wodehouse himself as he wrote the book and lyrics to many Broadway shows and songs. While none of the songs he contributed to are actually heard in Jeeves and Wooster, some of the shows he wrote are represented by songs featured in the television program. For example, the song Anything Goes, written by Cole Porter, was featured in the show, also titled Anything Goes, the book of which was written in part by P.G. Wodehouse. He also contributed to the book of the musical Ask Dad, later retitled Oh My Dear, and wrote the lyrics for the show's original title song, Ask Dad. While this song is not actually heard in the TV show itself, a Broadway show and song with the same title are featured in an episode of the television program. I'll talk more about this later on. These examples simply demonstrate how the original popular music heard in Jeeves and Wooster connect to and are in some ways inspired by the works, literary and musical, of P.G. Wodehouse. Now, let's talk about the music that's actually in the show. And if you're interested in just a list of all the pieces heard or referenced in the show, just jump to the end of this video where I have a mostly complete list. The music heard throughout the series can be broken down into two main types. The first type is the music written for the program by composer Anne Dudley, which consists of the title theme, background score, and some songs written in the style of original popular music. The second type consists of pre-existing songs and music, most of which are examples of Origipop, with a few instances of classical music as well, such as opera arias or classical piano pieces performed by characters. There's not a lot of classical music in the show, and I'm not really going to focus on it in this video. Overall, out of the 23 episodes of the program, there are only four that I'm aware of, which contain no music or songs of this second type, which I'll refer to from now on as type two. First, let's look at the music composed by Anne Dudley, the type one music. The most famous piece is the title theme, set to a beautifully animated segment in Art Deco style. Anne Dudley herself stated that the opening bass voices and solo violin, coupled with a stunning animated title sequence, aimed to transport the audience instantly to the world in 1930, 
And I would argue that it does precisely that and does it quite well. This theme is heard throughout the series and is often altered slightly to fit various circumstances. My favorite variation, and apparently that of Anne Dudley herself, is the English pastoral style that it acquired on a bright country morning as Jeeves serves breakfast in a cowshed. This is heard at the end of episode four of season two. She also wrote several other themes that can be heard throughout the show. In addition to these pieces of the background score, she also wrote a few songs in the style of original popular music. I believe the first instance of this is found in episode three of season two. In this episode, Bertie attends a musical titled Woof Woof, which features a song presumably also titled Woof Woof. <laughs> While there was apparently a short-lived Broadway musical of this name, IBDB.com does not list a song with this name as being part of that show, and I can't find this song elsewhere either. As a result, it is most likely a song written by Ann Dudley in the style of a musical number from the era. Other examples of this can be found in episode three of season three. In this episode, we are introduced to a Broadway show titled Ask Dad, and hear parts of the title song, Ask Dad, as well as a number presumably titled You're Just In Love. Ask Dad, Ask Dad, that's all they ever say. Ask Dad, Ask Dad, they take your breath away. As mentioned earlier, there was in reality a 1919 musical initially titled Ask Dad, later retitled Oh My Dear, the book and lyrics of which were written in part by P.G. Wodehouse. However, while IBDB.com states that there was also a song titled Ask Dad in that musical, I have been unable to find any sheet music of this song. Anne Dudley also stated she wrote several songs for a spoof Broadway musical, Ask Dad. So it seems that both of these songs were written by her. And just a side note, the song You're Just In Love has nothing to do with the actual Irving Berlin song from Call Me Madam, You're Just In Love. Put your head on my shoulder, you need someone who's older, a rub down with a velvet glove. There is nothing you can take to relieve that pleasant ache. You're not sick, you're just in love. The only other song which seems to be written by Ann Dudley in the style of a Ridgepop can be found in the first episode of season four. There is a song sung in a nightclub in this episode, which is presumably titled Time Without End. Time without end I wait for you this day I initially assumed that this was a real song, but after some research, it doesn't appear to be. So I can only assume that it was written by Ann Dudley for the show, but I don't know why a new song would have been written instead of choosing a song from the period, as is done many other times. The rest of the music in Jeeves and Wooster is the type two music, the pre-existing songs and other pieces. Again, most of this is a rigid pop, with a few examples of classical music as well. There are three main ways this type two music is presented in Jeeves and Wooster. Most often, a song or piece is sung and or played on the piano or other instrument by a character, usually Bertie Wooster. Sometimes a piece of a ridgepop can be heard interpolated into the score as background music, usually in scenes of a party or ball. 
And lastly, some songs are simply referenced by characters in dialogue. The pieces of original popular music heard in the show were all published between 1897 and 1934, with the majority of the songs dating to the 1920s. Some of the songs are from musical shows or reviews, while others are more standalone songs published independent of a show. Some are written by famous American composers, such as Irving Berlin and Cole Porter, while others are lesser-known British dance band pieces by composers such as Leslie Cerrone and Tolchard Evans. The earliest piece, Asleep in the Deep, written in 1897, is not actually heard in the show, but only referenced in dialogue. If you were to perform at the village concert, sir, and receive the acclaim of the masses, Miss Bing could be swept helplessly along in its wake. What a wonderful idea, Jeeves. I could sing Asleep in the Deep. There are four other songs that date to earlier than the 1920s. These include Because, from 1902, sung by Cora Bellinger at a dinner party in Season 1, Episode 2. Kashmiri Song, also from 1902, which Bertie sings to himself, sans piano, in his flat in Episode 4 of Season 4. Destiny Waltz, from 1912, a violin piano arrangement of which is played at the Village Concert in Season 3, Episode 5. And Oh by Jingo, published in 1919. This song is sung and played on the piano by Bertie Wooster at the beginning of the second to last episode. It is also sung by several people later on, just before the credits roll, making for a great ending to the penultimate episode. Oh my gee, my gosh, my gum, my joe. Oh my joe, oh my joe, oh my joe. Oh my, joe. Oh my jingo, won't you hear our love? Will you kindly raise your voice? Louder! We will build for you a hut. Yes, you will be our favorite nut. Right. We'll have a lot of little oh my joeses. Dress them up in clogs and clothes. Oh, by Jingo, said by gosh, by G. E, A, B, C, D, E, stop. Oh, by Jiminy, please don't bother me. <laughs> so they all went away saying, Oh, by G, my gosh, my gun, my oh, by Jingo, by G, oh, the only one for me. Bring me lobster on a clean plate. Again, the majority of the pieces of Origipop heard throughout the episodes were written in the 1920s. There are so many, 21 by my count, I can't cover all of them here, but a few highlights are as follows. 47 Ginger-Headed Sailors. While this 1928 song is sung and played on the piano more completely in the next episode, it is first heard in the very first episode of the series, as Bertie sings it quietly to himself while walking to the Drones Club. 47 Ginger-Headed Sailors. Overall, it can be heard in three different episodes, all from the first season. Sunny Boy. This famous Al Jolson song, which I mentioned earlier as being a central part of one of the short stories, makes its appearance in the second episode of season one, in a story which closely follows that of the book. Sunny Disposition. One of my personal favorites, this 1926 song with lyrics by Ira Gershwin can be heard in episode three of season two. While Bertie appreciates the song's spot of philosophy, I enjoy the inventive rhymes, such as At the risk of sounding rather platitude in us Here's what I believe should be the attitude in us. Barnacle Bill the Sailor. This song is initially referenced in dialogue in Season 2, Episode 5. It is a body drinking song, adapted from a traditional folk song, and has several different sets of lyrics, some of which are fairly off-color. While none of the lyrics are sung, it is played by members of the Drones Club on banjos at a birthday party right before Bertie sings Lady of Spain. Ever So Goosey. This 1929 song, which, according to Bertie, features intellectual content, can be heard in Season 3, Episode 4, as Bertie sings it to Gussie, right after he sings I lift up my finger and say tweet tweet. You do something to me. The melody of this famous 1929 Cole Porter song is set to different lyrics in Episode 1 of Season 4. It is used as both a soup company's jingle and a parody of that jingle, poking fun at Tuppy. Sunny Havana. This obscure 1925 song by Horatio Nichols is an interesting one. There is a line of dialogue in the penultimate episode where Jeeves, in an attempt to convince Bertie to holiday in Cuba, mentions that he is particularly fond of sunny Havana City of Light. However, I wasn't able to find a song with that title at all. The closest thing I could find was this song, titled simply Sunny Havana. It's pretty obscure, but I actually quite like it. So, we've looked at some of the songs from the 1920s and earlier. Now let's look at the few that were written after the 20s. There are only four songs featured in the show from the 1930s, all of them from the first half of the decade, and they are as follows. Minnie the Moocher, published in 1931, is heard in the very first episode when Bertie plays and sings it and persuades Jeeves to try to lend a hand during the call and response bid. Ho-dee-ho-dee-ho-dee-ho. Ho-dee-ho-dee-ho, sir. 
de ra de ra de ra ra de ra de ra sir ti he de he ti de he de he sir lady of spain was also published in 1931 and can be heard in the fifth episode of season two when several members of the drones play this song on banjos at a birthday party with birdie singing along good night vienna from 1932 can be heard in the third episode of season one when birdie sings it in his flat and gives us this interesting observation I mean, fancy writing a song about saying good night to a whole city. I mean, you might as well say, um, good afternoon, Manchester, or fancy bumming into you, Basingstoke. Yes, sir. Or, I didn't see you at the club last night, Cleethorpes. <laughs> and the last song is Anything Goes, published in 1934. An instrumental arrangement of this song can be heard playing in the background during a party in season two, episode two. But the use of this song here is funny because it's anachronistic. While we don't know exactly when this episode, or indeed any of Jeeves and Wooster, is supposed to be set exactly, it is clear in this episode that it is set during Prohibition. However, Prohibition was repealed in 1933, and Anything Goes wasn't written until 1934. So, I, I, I don't know. Gotcha. I also want to mention that there are some pieces of music that I was unable to identify. Most of the Type 2 music heard in the show either have their lyrics sung or the title mentioned via dialogue, making identification of these pieces relatively simple. However, there are some songs, such as those which can be heard interpolated into the score as background music, which are difficult to identify. Sometimes it is even difficult to determine whether they are pre-existing songs or music composed in that style by Ann Dudley. As a result, there are a few pieces of background music which might be original popular music that, unfortunately, I'm just not sure about. Another note to mention here relates to the 1930 song Changes, written by Walter Donaldson. This song is included on the official Jeeves and Wooster soundtrack, as are many other Pop songs which can be heard in the television program. However, I was unable to identify where in the show this song is played. I just didn't hear it anywhere as I watched the show. So there you have it. The music of Jeeves and Wooster was extensive and varied, but overall a great addition to the already well-done program, and a fitting homage to the original source material, the world in which it was written, and the author who started it all. And one more thing, in addition to this extensive look into the music, I have also created a Jeeves and Wooster songbook, which contains almost all of the original popular music heard in the program. I created it just for myself, but don't mind sharing it with others who are interested. However, there is the issue of copyright. Many of the songs are currently in the public domain, or will be within the next few years, but there are some that are not. Perhaps I could send out my songbook with some of the copyrighted songs taken out or something? We can figure it out. If you're interested, send me an email. My email address can be found in the About section of my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Very good, let me have a go.